Julia! <laughs> I take no. What an exciting game. Oh my goodness. Do you know for a moment, I didn't even care if we won the game or not. I was just like, this is great basketball. Like, what is this? What's going on? I, I watched the game. I watched the first half of the game with a friend, right? And I was telling them that if we won the game tonight, we'll be 13, is it? No, 14 and 15? Yes. Right? And I was like, it's only one below 500. And they were like, yeah, that's, isn't that like not good? I was like, you don't understand. I was like, for Knicks fans, for us to be like one below 500 right now is amazing. We're so excited. What a game. What a game. You summed it up. I tweeted out. I said, this is NBA action. This game felt like, you know, you see highlights of other games and you're like, damn, they had a really good game in that other city. <laughs> this one, and it's a kind of game you only get when your team is good. Right? Because when your team is bad and it's a tight game, it doesn't feel consistent. When your team is good and they're locked into these games, mm -hmm. this is not like a low-key playoff game. Could you imagine the Garden tonight? Could, Listen, you I don't know what they're doing the recording. I don't know what they're recording, but it clearly sounds like they're fans there. And I know they're there. And even Clyde at one point, I think in the third quarter when the Hawks started to get a little move on us, yeah, Clyde was like, oh, that, qui that quieted the fans down. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? Are there secret fans there that we don't know about? Oh my goodness. Let's please talk about Julius Randle, star of the game. He had his career high tonight of- But one short, one short. His career high of seven three-pointers. Okay, there you go, yeah. I'm <laughs> correcting it, I'm correcting it. And then 44 points, like, wow, 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 wow. Bro, like, okay, okay, okay. He comes out and it's, the, the thing is with Julius this season, we know he's cleaned up his game a lot. His passing has improved. He's keeping his eyes up. He's playing more defense. He's a better leader, everything. But on top of that, the shots that he's making this season are insane. Because he's not, his confidence is so high now yes. that, listen, a lot of those shots are bad shots, but it doesn't matter. Julius is so confident. He's pulling up. He's, he's hitting pull-up jump, pull jumpers on guys. He's getting guys in the post. He's hitting crazy fall away three-point shots. He was insane tonight. He actually looked like Carmelo Anthony. I think it's the most points so, that Nick has scored. It's since funny you said that because when he was when he was getting up there and I saw 40 something points, I was like, oh my God, Julius is trying to give Melo a run for his money. He right. played well in every aspect. Um we, we, we gotta get the Julius shirt now. I know I know we have one of our subscribers that thinks we or thought we hated Julius. <laughs> Maybe he wants to buy a shirt for us. We would love to get a shirt of you. I, 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 I doubt it. I'll say this. I'll say this, for all the Julius slander you heard here, I don't want to say we're taking it back, but I don't think we were ever, it was never malicious, right? I wanted to see Julius, who, if you look at the video we did, before he came here, we were so excited, this is what we wanted to see, and he even felt bad at times later when he started padding on last year. So to right. see him come out this year, renewed focus, they drafted Obi, they drafted technically his replacement, mm -hmm. and Julius was like, nah, raise his game to another level, he's an all-star Hashtag Julius Randall, hashtag NBA All-Star. And one thing that's great is as we get closer and closer to the All-Star announcements, Julius is playing more and more like he wants to make sure you know he has right. to be an All-Star. This is a right. big game. A lot of national media saw this. Okay. This is going to sway some votes because this was this, like he's he's in that group with a bunch of other guys like Zach Levine. And don't get me wrong, Zach Levine's been killing it. Right. But a bunch of guys who are kind of maybe going to get the last spot. Randall having a big game like this right before voting ends. Yeah. Incredible. The Garden tonight, he would have gotten MVP chance. Oh, gotten MVP chance. Uh, and you know, outside of um, outside of what we're seeing on the court, he is emerging as a leader. They keep saying it, right? And obviously, we don't get to see a lot of that behind the scenes. So he clearly is, basically, he is this season what we wanted and what we expected he was going to be when we first got him. And you, and and, and the thing is, anyone that was watching him play last last year, you saw his faults. He saw his faults. He made adjustments. He made changes. We got a new front of house stuff. We front of house stuff. I'm back in the restaurant. We got a new front office. We got a new coach. And these guys are working well together. They're seeing the potential with him. And he's he's riding it, man. He's he, he's on a rocket right now. I'm loving it.
Well, it, it, it is so it is so joyous to see a player struggle and come out of that and become this next level. At this point, Julius is future with the Knicks. You gotta sign this guy. You're not getting this production for 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 cheap, and he's worth it right now. So Knicks, obviously, they're gonna play their game. But Julius Randle right now, this is an incredible turnaround. Yeah. He is going to be in some serious talks for some awards at the end of the season. He keeps playing like this. It is incredible. Like, I think it's even hard right now to tell what level he really is. Like, for example, I think everybody should know this. He is better than Chris Tapsuzingis ever was. Right. Clearly. So the, just to just put that out there. And you saw what Tapsuzingis got in his contract. So Randle's going to deserve it. I really hope, though, that he can keep this up and keep proving people wrong because we've kind of said, you know, maybe Julius could be like a nice second or third star on a team. But now I'm like, sky's the limit because yeah. he's doing this. Wow. Definitely. Definitely. Incredible. Another guy tonight who stepped up uh, in, a, in a different way, Nerlens Noel, coming in from Mitch Robinson. Mitch is going to be out about six weeks. He's getting a second opinion. I guess I, he I heard that. I heard that too. He have to be surgery. But Nerlens comes in and some really crucial blocks. There was that play. The game yes. got so exciting. Like, right, 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 right towards the end. Right towards the end. It, it, I, I was here screaming. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, screaming right towards the end. He like showed. He showed up, and that and that you know what that shows you. It shows you that you know. Look at look at look at his his uh, his stats. Right. Six points, two steals, three blocks. Okay, the three blocks are good. Obviously, six points. Ah, that's not so much. But how valuable was he with those blocks, and how valuable was he with the six points? Even. Yeah. Right? The, the, the timing of them. Um. You, you know, so, so sometimes people can be valuable in other ways on the court. And he brought that energy. And I like seeing what I saw tonight from the very beginning of the game, mind you, was everyone was contributing. Yep. The entire team. And we have been, as fans, talking about Tibbs and his rotation. Everyone's been screaming for quickly to start, quickly needs to start. But look at what has happened. Here we are doubting the coaches and doubting the people that are trained to do this. Look at what they've done. They have put together a bench team that is basically a starting lineup as well. So it's like we have two starting lineups. I want you to show, I have a, I have a comment here. I know, I know it's not quite that time just yet. I need my glasses, sorry. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's not quite that time yet. I got it, I got it. You got the comment? Yeah. <laughs> From just Johan, the Knicks bench is better than the starting lineup. That may be true, but not if Randall's going off like that. But I love it. You got Myrna say you were going off, and I loved it. You were right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> I mean, so, 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 uh, listen, Tibbs and the staff, they know what they're doing. And they put together a team that is able to all be effective in their own different ways, right? Because everyone's going to bring something different to the team. And they are working together so well. They have meshed together like seamlessly. And with Derek Rose coming in, you know, thinking you would need a few games for some adjustment, he fit in seamlessly. So I am, I mean, you saw that these, I don't know who was watching it on TV, but at the end of the game, when Randall went to, um, to do his post interview, and it's typically just one person that's there, there were like five other players there around him, like egging him on and being, they were like, they were like, nah, you the MVP, you the MVP. I know that, um, Pinson was there. RJ. Who was there? RJ was there. Yeah. And they all looked so happy for him and happy as a team. And someone else who is happy is Tom Thibodeau because apparently he's been smiling more than they've ever seen him smile before. And he says, You can't help, help smiling being around these guys. He can't help, help smiling. Obviously, winning as well is going to help that. But I think he really likes this group of guys and they're giving him energy and he's happy and he's smiling. Everyone's smiling. Uh, <laughs> you, you hit it on the head. Alfred Payton, another solid game from him. He's been really better the past few games. The Derek Rose in his, you know, in his back is very mirror. I think it's giving him the extra push. But like you said, these rotations are now working, right? I want to say I love the end of game lineup. Quickly and Derek Rose with Randall, Nerlens Noel, and RJ Barrett. I loved it. You know, we had, think about it, we had Quickly and RJ out there, right? You had Derek Rose and Randall, Nerlens Noel at the center. Normally that'd be Mitch. But I love that lineup. It gave you the shooting that you needed. It gave you Randall doing this thing, but now you couldn't focus too much on Randall because Quickly could hit a shot. In fact, let's talk about the man, Emmanuel Quickly. This kid, again, he's so fearless. And he, it, because you have someone who has such an elite skill in terms of his people and shooting, mm -hmm. there are just so many moments in the game 
where we're struggling, things aren't working out. And, you know, it looks like it could go either way. We saw that run from the Hawks in the third quarter. Yeah. And quickly can just come in and without even having an offense set up properly, just shoot two threes and all of a sudden... The game the is different. It's, it's crazy. He started the game like that. His When he first got on the court, his first... I think the first shot was a three-pointer and it was like... That energy was like, damn, like, I'm here. It, it, it was like, that's how I felt that he was like, yeah, I'm here. I just hit the court. And I, I have nothing, nothing but praise for this guy. Nothing but praise for him. Yeah, he hits the fourth quarter at the end there. He gets to play in crunch time. And they actually had him ball handling a lot. I really liked his decision making. Um, going up against Trey Young, who, wait, first, we didn't talk about the refs. I, I don't want to go too far with this because we won. want to focus on that. Right. But that ref, Lauren Holdcamp, Hates the Knicks. Every time she I wrestled, I saw the shop. I saw she got a shop. Yes. I saw every, her. I saw her. Every time we, I'm telling you, every time she's against the Knicks, it's on a foul call. Trey Young is so annoying to watch. I know quickly is annoying too. I get it, but Trey Young is worse. There are a couple of plays. The Derek Rose with Derek Rose's hands are literally behind his back. They mm -hmm. call the foul. Uh, it, it's annoying to watch him play basketball. He's a talented guy, but I can't stand it. Actually, good thing. Actually, I actually also like watching him play because he's super energetic and he's a little smaller than the other guys and you can see he really fights really, really hard. But there was a oh. comment that was made today that I thought was <laughs> hilarious. And they were, and him, and like you said, quickly knows how to do this pretty well also is to get those that get those foul calls. Um, they, said that he's sell, they said that he's selling free throws. And I thought that quote was so funny because he really does know how to do that. He knows how to sell it. And, yeah. quickly, and quickly does too. So, you know, they were, they were there. Yeah. I'll put it this way. It's gl I'm glad that after years of watching guys do this against us, we have a counter. Because you never had a guy like this. Melo never got foul calls, you know what I mean? So good right. that we have quickly to throw, you know, as our counter measure. Now, I want to shout out RJ. Finally, after yeah. about five or so bad games, you know, right. really not, not getting a lot of minutes, struggling with his shot. He came out tonight, and from the jump, you could see he was motivated. He's playing against Cam Reddish. His yes. boy from Duke. So I knew, I had a feeling before this that RJ would come out tonight, maybe trying to prove a point. Uh, and it was good to see him in the flow. And it was great to see him in the final game lineup with Quickly and Rose and Randall. The yeah. thing is, RJ hasn't really played with Quickly much, right? Mm -hmm. So that play, for example, near the end of the game where Quickly came off the pick and roll and found RJ in the corner for the three, it was mm -hmm. a big three. Pretty much kind of helped seal the game. I loved it. That was everything you want to see, right? It's your point guard that you just drafted. Your number three pick last year, combining in the clutch to make something big happen. Mm -hmm. RJ, we always say he bounces back. He did it yeah. again. Yeah, he he's great at bouncing back. So even when he had those couple of bad games, I knew he would come back out also. And I meant to text you before the game to tell you I think RJ is going to actually have a pretty decent game tonight. And here you go, he proved us right. And I'm not I'm not worried about him. RJ's young. RJ's younger than the other guys. Right, he's and, younger than quickly. Yeah, he's younger than quickly. People are doing, yeah. So, so you know, he's our draft pick. We're keeping him here. He's gonna be fine. He, he's he, he has he has the right attitude. He doesn't go up and sulk <laughs> in the corner. You never see that with him. And um, he's he's gonna be fine. I'm not worried about him at all. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Uh Dark Pros quickly. Kind of, we kind of mentioned him before. Yeah. Same thing. Veteran leadership. We saw him bring the guys back in when we started to let the lead slip. Mm hmm night and day from his first time here it's yeah. it, it's, oh, yeah. it's been a phenomenal trade so far like yeah yes he i mean he he's like two different people from when he was here the last time yeah yeah you know, he, 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 and, and i'm sure i'm sure he's obviously he's grown and i'm sure he knows that too like you know he obviously came back here to come play with tibbs and came back here to do exactly what he's doing right now which is take a different role a very different role from what he was first in, in the league known for and he's bringing us, you know, I sometimes I am wary with them bringing in um, an older guy because they're going to get injured. And we already know he has, he's, well, had some really bad injuries in his career already. But I think that he's here really to sort of help these guys get to the next level. So I like that move because it's not like we, it's not like, you know how sometimes we chase stars, right? So we get that guy that's a little too old and we're bringing him in and we're paying him a ton load of money to be the star of the team. And we're like, no, he's too old. He can't be the star. So in this case, I feel like, yes, we brought this older guy back, but we're not putting him in this star position. We're putting him almost in a, in a backcourt kind of position where he's just going to help feed the energy to the, to the younger guys and teach them the way and motivate them and give them the veteran leadership. So that's his role, clearly, with the team. And so I like, I, I very much like what they've done with that. 
All right. So let's get into our segments. I'm going to go first and I'll let you sign okay. off with what you're talking about. We'll save your comments for the best for last. No this is what they talking about. So let's see what the people of Reddit were saying tonight. Uh, first comment here. When did Julius Randle turn into prime Ray Allen? Randle tonight. Oh, oh, oh. From deep. Uh, this is now, if you've been keeping track, guys, he's now been compared in the games we played against these teams to Damian Lillard. Steph Curry and Ray Allen. So, do you want to know yeah. what kind of season yeah, Julius Randle's having? Pretty, I think he's in some pretty good company. I didn't look at all of his stats, but I know he has some really good stats um, in the league, like over, like overall. Oh, Randle is there. He, yeah. He's the crazy thing about Randle is if you look at his stats, like you know how many points, rebounds, and assists he has, mm -hmm. he literally looks like LeBron. Like if you looked at the numbers, LeBron would score more than this. That's the only thing, and it's just a little bit more. But the way it's broken down is very similar to LeBron. So I've been seeing people call him Lorando Le and stuff like that. So yeah, Lorando. There you go. Okay. Let's go to the next comment here. Um, uh, this is from a Celtic fan, and you know they hate us. So yes. I'm from a Celtic fan, it's good. I think this is the game where I miss the fans the most. MSG would have been going bonkers down the stretch. Absolutely, absolutely. Like what? MVP chance for Julius Randle. This was at MSG. And the final comment here from a Dallas fan, someone else who is really a fan of us. <laughs> um, Julius Randle is legitimately good. Tibbs was a great hire. Quickly is the rookie of the year. Knicks are the most competent team. Wow. <laughs> what? Wait, 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 wait. Back up. Back up. <laughs> Somebody said what? Knicks are the most competent team? What I year is this? I would hear those two words in the same sentence but yes he's right he's right we finally are a relevant competent team i love it i love it all right now let, let's hear what y'all talking about you have any particular what are y'all talking about so <laughs> i have um uh someone who's been following us for a long time a long time subscriber agent super argo and he said the real heroes are the new front office Right, I know we've been talking a lot about Coach Tibbs and the coaching stuff, but the front office clearly have put together a superb team at this moment. And I think we like everything that we're seeing. Here's what's crazy, just a quick comment on that. Mm -hmm. They put together a team and I don't think they've even gotten started. You're right, you're right. And yeah. we're, we're not talking about trades in the show at all. People get upset when we talk about trades. We're not talking <laughs> about trades, but yes, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you out there. Um, so this is just a comment that I thought was just too funny. Um, too saucy was what uh, too saucy was what Tyreek Craddock said about Rose and IQ, and he's so right. Like I love seeing them together. They had they had that little sauciness. I thought that was a nice little comment about um, uh, Derek Rose and IQ. And um, this comment you read, we already said, but we can show it again real quick because you know what are we saying here? The, 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 the next bench, right? Yeah, they're fun to watch. They should beat most bench teams. So. It's exciting to see them come on. Yep. And then uh, last last comment was... Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't read here. Last oh, it's the same thing, basically. It was the same thing. But Nathaniel Perez saying that we don't have a bench. We have starting lineup 1A and starting lineup 1B. So everyone seems to be quite happy with, the, um, with our two lineups right now. And we are looking forward to um, the next couple of games. We have Magic. We're playing the um, yeah, we're playing the Magic on Wednesday at seven thirty, and the Spurs on Saturday at one p.m. If they're allowed to play, if they have enough players, because I think tonight's game or tomorrow's game was canceled uh, due to yeah, COVID. the Pistons, right? Yeah, yeah. Lucy, 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 I can't believe we've been so good with COVID. It's actually insane. We are actually one of five teams that has not had to sit out any games due to COVID. That's crazy because that means as well, on the second half of the season, we won't have to play a bunch of games back to back to back. A lot of teams that have missed games, what's going to happen is when they, make them up. they only did half the schedule. So what's going to happen is the next half of the schedule, these teams are going to have way more games than us. And let's just say we're a good team heading towards the playoffs. We're going to have a lot more time off heading into the postseason. Right. I, I look at this team, I know we're about to get off here. I look at this team right now and I'm like, who, who will they not? Only the, the the Nets are the only team I genuinely feel we would have no hope against, right? The other teams that are better than us, like you know, they're better records than us. I look at us playing them, and I still see that we could be in games and yeah. be in a fight. You know what I mean? 
yeah. the Nets are the only team where I genuinely think if the Nets play well, like we, everybody in the Nets would look like Julius Randle tonight. So right. it would be, if, yeah, that's a team where the talent level is too much. But yeah. man, this team, they're bringing joy. Guys, get hyped. Uh, subscribe if you enjoyed subscribe. the content the first time uh, here. We wouldn't even do an intro. So what's up with Just that? Bring it up. I'll put something in the intro. I'll put something in the intro. But um, yeah, guys, listen, this is... Speech that's most fun. I said most fun nickname since the KP game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess so. And, and I wish we could have been there because then it would have been even more fun. <laughs> are, you working, are, you, are, you, are you working out for us to get to the game on the 23rd? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing. Mm-hmm. I have said a second email. Second email. All right, guys. Thanks okay. for watching. Take care. Peace. Next win. Next nation. We're a good team, man. Incredible.